hope you guys aren't tired of lightning. <laughs> As usual, I'm late to the party. Uh, just noticed on my weather radar that we got a lightning alert for a couple miles from my house, so I'm gonna try to get out and shoot some lightning. But we're also here today because I'm gonna try out this lens, which is a, a really weird new lens for the RF mount by Nisi. I think they make it on different mounts, but I have the RF mount. Not sponsored, by the way. They just happened to send it to me and there just happens to be a bunch of people driving by right now. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, Nisi just asked me if I wanted to try out their lens and I said sure because there's just not a whole lot of third party options for the RF system. And this one does something unique that uh, other lenses don't do. So despite, uh, despite some of its potential negatives, this could be a unique selling point for it. And I'm gonna try it out. Had to get my boots on first. You just don't go walking out in desert fields in skate shoes. Okay. Let's go. So I'm back at my one of my local spots that you guys have probably seen me. It's gonna get loud. Come to a lot and uh, that's La Capilla which is uh, this little historical landmark overlooking Silver City and whoops my tripod just bumped a rock what I want is lightning over La Capilla but I want it whoa sorry 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 I want it in a different way then I usually get it so I'm gonna try for a different composition you know you got to mix things up when you live in a small town okay I'm gonna set you guys down okay so that is La Capilla right there that is Silver City and uh, there's lightning just over there so I want to get set up and see if I can catch it You know, if I would have been out here 20 minutes ago, the sunset was fire. And of course I missed most of it. I was finishing up dinner and watching a movie with my son. And he said, whoa, dad, look outside. Crap. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, oh, that was good. Okay, so I need to probably be quick about this. So, first off, this is going to be a like a <laughs> run and gun out in the field first look at this Nisi 15 millimeter f4 lens. That's it right there. So, no B-roll on this one. I want to want to get this going quickly. So we are getting. Some good lightning. Okay, so this is thing is all manual. Did I mention that? So I'm gonna start with F11. I'm gonna focus on infinity. Drop my ISO. All right, so one thing about the, uh, if you've never used a manual lens before, you're gonna get, it's gonna say zero, zero, and uh, it's gonna be hard to tell if your shutter speed, uh, or, I mean, if your exposure, overall exposure is accurate. So you take a couple of test shots and you look at it and uh, That looks pretty good actually. So now I just want to check focus. Because you don't always want to trust the infinity sign. Uh, in this case, it actually seems to be fairly accurate. Cool. 
So that's good to know. This 14 is going to be too wide. Uh, I think the lightning is a little far away, but it's got a nice, this, I, the reason why I want to shoot it like this, and we're going to go up there and shoot some more too, is because, so this is a sun star lens. That's what Nisi are claiming. And they're claiming that you can shoot it as wide open as it goes, which is F4, and you can still get a sun star. Uh, I think that's very interesting. I also think that while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and set up another shot. So normally, uh, if you guys know how to do sun stars, if you don't, I have videos how to do it, but it's real simple. You just stop your aperture down and uh, the blades of the aperture will cause the points of light to make a star looking thing. And the star looking thing, the coolness of the star looking thing depends on the aperture blades. I think they said this one has, whoa, please tell me I got that. Uno momento, por favor. I have got to check. I didn't get that one. Oh, I, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I got it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be a good exercise, and if we can crop in and if this lens holds a good... Uh, image quality because like I said it's too wide but that I know you can't see it and I'm not gonna bother showing it right now but I'll show it to you that is that's the shot I, I, I couldn't have asked for a better lightning shot over La Capilla that is so cool okay well we're gonna let that go uh, momentito I'm gonna put this back on 100 Okay, so we're at 8 seconds, F11, ISO 100. If you saw the last video, uh, you'll know that daytime lightning, um, you have to keep the shutter speed a lot lower, and I showed you why, because you'll lose the bolt in the ambience. But now we're getting on a nighttime, so we're, you know, the holy grail is sunset like this. Uh, I shot this shot from, I think, right about here uh, last year, I think, and it's one of my all-time favorite lightning shots. Um, so sunset is like the holy grail of lightning, you know, but, uh, as it gets darker, it gets easier to catch those bolts and you can leave your shutter speed open for longer. There's also lightning over there, but there's crappy composition. I really like this composition. So I'm going to set up, this is my R6 and I'm going to, I got a 35 mil on here. And I'm gonna set it up right next to this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and autofocus. So what I don't want though, is I don't want a shutter speed that's too long. So because there is wind out here, I do live in New Mexico and it's quite windy. And uh, when storms are coming, it gets even windier. So I'm gonna drop this down to F8. All right, I'll actually, I'm gonna drop it down to F4. So I'm at F4, four seconds, ISO 100. I'm gonna let that go for a minute. So the other problem is the lightning is now going that way. So what I might do is here in a minute, I might pack everything up and there's another lookout over there that looks over here uh, that's higher up and I might get better shots. It's getting dark real quick and I don't think I brought any of my loom cubes for lighting me. So you guys might have to just deal with some slightly crappy visuals and some really high ISOs. But I, I already, I can't believe that within, you know, like less than a minute of setting this up, I already, whoops, whoops, double whoops. I already got the shot uh, that I was hoping for so that's impressive. So what else I'm going to do is I'm going to get, oh, that was over there. I don't think th this one may have gotten it. Let's check. I don't know if I want to go right up this hill and shoot that way, or if I want to go over there and drive to another hill so I can shoot that way. Let me uh, figure that out for a minute and then I'll come back to you guys. 
All right, back in the studio. It's the next morning. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I did that last night. <laughs> so let's get. Uh, let's see. Here's the lens. I'm just gonna throw something on my camera real quick. There. All right. There we go. There. Now you can have a slightly better look. That's the lens. Not a whole lot going on with this lens. So let's talk about it real quick and then I want to show you a couple images. Um, couple things that I didn't mention, or I don't know what I mentioned in the <laughs> last part of the video because I was out shooting lightning. So all metal construction, uh, it's, it's actually quite heavy. So that is pretty shocking like because it's, it's really small, um, but it's quite heavy and that, that surprises me for its size. So a couple of things that I like about it. That's a little bit, that's a little bit tight. Uh, metal ring or some kind of, yep, that's metal. This is one of, I think, probably redeeming or saving graces, cases about it, whatever you wanna say. The element is not bulbous. So, uh, well, the, the element actually is bulbous, but the, uh, it can still take a regular filter thread, so you can mount regular ND filters and do your long exposures and your circular polarizers and all of that good stuff. That is a really big help because, you know, like on the 14 mils, like on my Sam Yang and stuff like that, you can't do that without great expense and like ridiculous, great ridiculousness, you know, either the massive filters or the ones in the back and I just, I don't wanna mess with any of those. So having this be uh, be able to take filters is really nice. I mentioned that it's all manual, so I don't know if you can hear this. Let me... So basically, it's a clicking manual aperture. So probably not that great if you needed to change the aperture while filming. You know, you would want a cinema uh, aperture declicked aperture but not a deal breaker not not too much of an issue uh, the focus ring feels pretty nice pretty smooth the focus throw isn't too long and it's not too small so that's decent the downside one of the downsides to this is there is zero weather sealing so i mean there is no o-ring or protection or anything like that anywhere and I don't think there's any on this either and there's no coating um, so zero weather weather sealing so if you care about that that could be an issue all right that's that's it for the physical no there's not much going on there Seven, 72 millimeter so that's interesting it's definitely a size of filter that I don't have <laughs> but it's a smaller size so it's not hard to to get so let's just put that out of the way I want to show you a couple of shots that I did last night um, and we're going to take a, a little look at the quality these shots aren't the best like scientific or test example shots but they're how I would really use it and how I did use it um, so it's more practical than anything and let's just see if they're usable and what they look like all right so here are the shots that I grabbed last night then all the ones I took so you can see uh, this lens is definitely wide so 15 millimeters in my case uh, it was a little too wide for what I wanted. It's not to say that it's too wide of a lens because uh, there's plenty of times that I need the wide, but for this shot in particular, having to get that lightning, 
It's going to work out in our favor though. So here is, you can see uh, these images were taken side by side like seconds apart, like one second apart actually. So this one has the lightning that we're interested in. This was the raw image. So you can see that I'm underexposed by a couple of stops, but you can see the heavy vignetting in there. So let's just uh, open this up. That's not the end of the world. Okay. So here is the image. So I've already done some of the editing to this, but let's just this is at, I believe I set this to F11 initially. So we're going to zoom in to 100%. Center sharpness is not bad. Especially like that stuff's really far away for 15 millimeter. So here, this is still kind of in the center. And the details are looking good. That's looking decently sharp. But you can see as we go out, that's a hot pixel. It's not from the lens. <laughs> Here you can see everything getting a little bit uh, mushy there in the very corners. Again, that's underexposed as well. And then you can see that vignette. So there's no uh, correction available. I've added a plus 24. We could go maybe a little bit more. So plus 35, plus 40-ish. Uh, and you're still getting a pretty heavy vignette. But so that was before and after the vignette correction. I mean, I would say that vignette's a good two or three stops easy. But that's okay. Like I said, personally, I don't really care about lenses vignetting too much uh, on the stills side because either that's artistic and you kind of want it there or you can fix it a little bit. Uh, in my case, though, let's, we've finished editing everything I've pushed it kind of hard, um, full stop on the exposure and then plus 50 in the shadows. And that was my fault for underexposing. So that's more a testament of the camera. Uh, in this case, the R5 being able to handle the, you know, boosting in the shadows and stuff. So I think the best thing I'm going to do for this image in particular is I am going to do a wide crop 16 by 9 and then I'm just gonna bring this in quite a bit so again this is a testament to the R5 um, I mean that is 200 percent crop so that's too much so you can see we're really losing detail there but again here we're looking good lightning bolt we're looking good clouds we're looking good foreground we're looking good. We got a little uh, pathway pushing us in just a hair. So now we're coming up on almost 35 mil. Actually, I mean that's that's still pretty wide. That's still like 20 something because this was I shot this uh, at 35 mil, and this is just a little bit cropped in. Um, but that's the one I caught with the 35 millimeter, and I love that bolt like I cannot believe that I caught one bolt perfectly framing La Capilla uh, that's La Capilla like I mentioned that's the historical landmarker it's Spanish for a little church it's been there for a really long time very cool uh, very stoked on the composition of both of these shots but we're not here to talk about the 35 mil so this one I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull up uh, a little bit more here. All right, so all I did was a little bit of a curves there and uh, a little bit extra saturation. And I'm just not gonna push this lens any harder. Oh, what you did notice though is we were at F11 and even though it was really far away, 
uh, you can see you can see all of the sunbursts here so on all of the lampposts and I'll show you better examples of that from later but you can see them they're all there all the way so that's more of like the look you might go for if you are wanting this lens all right let's just look at one more shot real quick here's some of the night shots when it was super dark I didn't all the lightning I got I think was behind so we're not getting any here's one where the it's kind of lit up so now you can see these are much more exaggerated because they're closer So now we're just cropped into 50% here, and this is looking pretty good. So when you're using the wide angle and things are not too far away, and this is just physics and this is just common sense for uh, shooting with a wide angle, some of these highlights are pretty bright, but slightly recoverable. I'm impressed. Again, that's the R5. So just tweaking on that just a little bit. If we zoom all the way out, we can see that vignetting again. In this case, it's an astro shot, it's a nighttime shot. I don't really need to correct it because there's no stars, there's nothing going on. I'm gonna crop in anyways. This isn't a usable image, or this isn't an image that I would personally do anything with because there's nothing interesting happening uh, it's underexposed there's no lightning I'm just gonna crop this house out and this crappy foreground stuff but if I had gotten some nice bolts over this mountain or whatever that would be kind of cool and, you, and then you've got the the sun stars from all of the lamp posts and stuff like that in there but if we go back to this image I mean this is an image that I would definitely use and I would definitely post and I will post it um, and you know I'm, I mean that I would even print that if it were it's debatable if it's print worthy in terms of what I feel like I want to print but you know that's subjective but in terms of image quality uh, I think it'll hold up just fine to a, a decent sized print. All right, so there it is. That's uh, that's this Nisi 15 millimeter f4 manual lens in a nutshell. That was just kind of my first real world time out with it, an example of you know how you would use it. Uh, I think that it definitely has some downsides, and it's obviously not. The sharpest tool in the shed um, but for the price it's certainly usable it's one of the great things about it is the size if not the weight uh, definitely the size being able to fit this in the bag if you know you're gonna be like out in town somewhere or you know somewhere with lights at nighttime and you want to do those cool uh, sun star effect if you want it it's a very niche lens <laughs> this niche lens is niche <laughs> All right, I'm done. Anyways, you get what I'm trying to say. It, there's certain things that you might want this lens for, and that's kind of about it. You know, I, I wouldn't be using this as my main go-to wide-angle lens, uh, but on those occasions where I want something a little bit different uh, and I don't want to have to stop down all the way, you know, something like that, getting those sun stars, uh, this can be interesting. And if you're just looking for something to get into the super wide, uh, wide angle, then, you know, the budget friendliness aspect of this being under $600, I don't know how much it is for other systems, but for the R, the RF system, the Canon mirrorless system, I'm pretty sure that Amazon has it right now for $579. So the being able to do the Sun Star wide open is pretty cool. And the, uh, the being able to have a 15 millimeter with uh, filter thread available is also really great. So the downsides of you know the image quality, like I said, it falls off pretty bad 
around the edges, but it's pretty decent in the center. And for me, it's not a deal breaker. If I had this lens as a professional, I could still use it. I can still pump out images that clients would be happy with or that would be printable or whatever. So there's nothing horrible. And I, I haven't obviously done any scientific or super deep dive tests of it. I just went out and used it. Uh, and those are my thoughts after having used it. All right, tea is gone. Second breakfast time, I'm starving. If you have any questions about the lens uh, that I didn't go over or you want to know or how I got the shots or whatever that I didn't uh, talk about, leave those in the comments below and you know I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button for me because that's the best thing you do for my channel and I really appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.